Bacalo, ba right? Bacalo? I See, think that's what I thought too. That one I know for sure. It's Bacello. Bacello. Bacello? Bacello. I think it was Bacello. Yeah. Like Bacello. a cello? Bacello? Yeah, exactly. So, wow. and I know that because I went on his he, on his YouTube page has exactly one video, and he introduces himself by name at the beginning of that. Ah, okay. Uh, there we go. Hey, everybody! This is the Uncanny Omar, and today I am joined by these wonderful folks right here. We just decided to go live. Uh, <laughs> yes, we're <laughs> right in the middle. Of something. Right yes. in the middle of how to pronounce somebody's name. Yeah. Uh, but yes, we are here. Uh, I'm never late. I'm, I'm here on time. I said 12.35, and here I am. Uh, today, I have the biggest brain trust that I could put together when it comes to comedy. <laughs> the oh, biggest one you put now. together. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Yeah. And we will, we will go round table here to introduce each other and uh, tell people where they can find you. So uh, before going to do that, though, thank you to David Gabriel and Marvel for letting us yes. uh, show off this uh Advanced look at what the yeah. August solicitations will be for Marvel Comics. Absolutely. So, uh, to my right is the Norwegian assassin. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Lars. Mm -hmm. Who yes. are you? What do you do? Yes, I'm sure a lot of you know. I am Lars Pearson, uh, formerly of Wizard Magazine, currently of Mad Norwegian Press. And we were having some discussion that I'm finally becoming a real boy. In that I have, I have, I have, on the advice of these gentlemen, I have ordered Calyx shelves. <laughs> for my collection because all these years i've been making do with these and they're strong pine ones you know so they don't bend but, and they're easy to move but it does look a bit like something a college student would have so so soon i will be graduated and be as glorious as the rest of you <laughs> nice uh yeah you're not using the the what was it the bricks and stuff and uh, two by fours <laughs> the cinder block. The cinder block. we've all yeah. we've all been there <laughs> That was in college that I have. Block show. <laughs> have been there, yes. yes. Uh, and below me is one of my closest friends and my buddy, my co-host on Omni Bros Live, and that is Jess, the Omni Dog. Thanks, man. Peace and love. Peace and here. love. Thank you for having me. I am uh, Omni Dog Jess Bragg, and I am I have a YouTube show, Omni Dog's Vault, and mm -hmm. I also am represented on Instagram, Omni Dog's underscore Vault. Uh, and I know a little bit about a few things, but not as much as these guys. So I'll try to have some type of reasonable input today besides, oh, good. That sounds like a good book. <laughs> if that's not on your business card, <laughs> you need to get a business card. I know a little bit about some things, but not as much as everybody guys. else. <laughs> well, I just noticed your uh, new setup behind you, Omar. This is your new home and your new yeah, uh, man. setup. Yep. Looks um, nice. Thank you. Thank you. I've got just about 80% of it put up. I'm working on the manga stuff right now. And yeah. And then real things get in the way. Like my wife wants me to move furniture around. We don't need furniture. I need to get my books up. <laughs> yeah. Moneymaker. Priorities. Priorities. I need to mow the lawn. Pff, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, thank you uh, for being here, dude. It's been a, Thanks it's been for a asking me. Uh, absolutely. And then, of course, last but not least, is Curtis from the Epic Marvel Podcast. That's right. I am from the Epic Marvel Podcast. Just search for that on any social media you can find me. But I also work for the Library of American Comics. And I just want to say that this book here, For Better Force Volume 6, is in stores now. Yeah. Hold that up. It is in I, stores now, right? In stores I, now. I, why, I are you, why, why are you pushing that particular book, Curtis? Uh, okay. Well, I am the editor on this series and it is one of the best newspaper comic strips that uh that is out there it ran from 1979 to 2008 and this is volume six which covers the years 1996 to 1999 should we see inside here i did a lot of work on the sundays restoring the color and uh the, you know the, the monday through saturday strips are all in black and white as they originally appeared in the newspapers and this is just really really fantastic stuff so if you can, uh, if you have a love for newspaper comic strips or just family drama strips like, like this, they're they're just fantastic. And Lynn Johnston is an incredible cartoonist, uh, very funny. And uh, Jess, you had the opportunity to talk to her, right? Is that right? I uh, I, did, I didn't get to talk to her. Oh, uh, we didn't set that up. Okay, I'll make sure. Yeah, that <laughs> Curtis, you, you, I didn't <laughs> want to bug you, but <laughs> yeah, we didn't. Uh, but I did order. I want to put in a plug for Curtis on those books. I did order the book he just had in his hands. Um, it, yeah, I just bought that. It hasn't it hasn't arrived yet. But these books are not only gorgeous gorgeously put together gorgeously produced 
he's a hundred percent right about uh, Lynn Johnson and how uh, what a great writer and artist she is, and how she was so. I love that strip. That's one of my top five comic strips of all time yep. because she got the family dynamic perfectly, made it funny, but also made it super touching where it needed to be touching. Um, she had great timing on all of her uh, strips. Um, and she was a trendsetter too. Um if you want to go into my vault library, I, I reviewed volume five um, and I, I, I talk uh, exceedingly. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I am a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of hers. <laughs> That's a big word. That's a big I, word. Yeah, I, I couldn't come up with a word. So I, <laughs> but those books are beautiful. And Curtis just does a, a, a great job putting those together. Well, the design, um, the, the the design is all Dean Mullaney. He is an an incredible designer, so he did that, and I just made sure that you know all of them were in the right order. And, and uh, you did a good job. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, that, that's a big task. As a guy that used to do custom omnis, like you know, putting his issues together. Yeah, you got to map them you, out right. You yeah. throw one issue in there, like you throw issue thirteen uh, in between issues seventeen and twenty. <laughs> that mess everything up. Like people don't understand how meticulous and you know you have to be with that stuff. Uh, but yeah, I mean, man, I, I know Melanie did an overview of that uh, for better or worse, Volume Five. So she really enjoys them too. She's more of a comic strip person than I was. I'm, for me, like Far Side is no, no offense to for better oh, or yeah. worse. I'm sure it's great. Far Side's fantastic. Uh, oh, Far Side's in Far the side top. And five. Calvin and Hobbes and Peanuts, I think, were the top. Uh, those are the ones that make up the rest of my five. Yeah, those are, that's the Holy Trinity for me. And then uh, Family Circus. <laughs> I, I actually have a family circus uh my wife has one up on the wall from 30 years ago where it's jeffy saying i'm so happy if i had a tail i'd wag it she, that's my wife right there that's awesome that's great so you have the, you have the far side collection right jess i assume uh i have a couple i have i have big the hard heavy, covers yeah, yeah i have the big heavy oh. hard covers mm -hmm. In yeah. the hardcovers, there there is a strip, and then we'll go ahead and get started because I think people have <laughs> trickled in here. Uh, in the hardcover, there's a, a story about um, how Larson was talking about they accidentally put the wrong uh, narration with the comic strip. So they put the family circus narration with the far side <laughs> comic strip, the far side comic strip with Good. the uh, family circus. Good. And he was like, you know what? It actually made it funnier. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was, that was awesome. All right, Perfect. so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna be looking at- Wait, Lars, did you have some? Well, just two, two things quickly. I have to say, in high school, I had the dubious honor. My high school um, did Tumbleweeds, the musical. Oh, and what? also, <laughs> and, no, I, I kid you not. I kid you not. That's an actual thing. And awesome. Funky, Funky Winkerbean, the musical. Oh, um, Funky, awesome. I remember him. Funky Winkerbean. And yep. I had the dubious honor of playing the Eliminator in Funky yeah. Winkerbean, the musical. That's great. I'm doing a huge um, read through of Funky Winkerbean right now, and it's really it's quite funny. <laughs> yeah. Quick, quickly, Curtis, how hard is it to ascertain what the actual order it goes in? Because I know that, like, with Bloom County, they committed to doing the collections, but they weren't actually sure N nobody had kept an archive of what was oh, supposed to be it, there and then apparently apparently somebody came to burke Graft at a convention and just dumped on his table they had a full set of the newspaper cutouts <laughs> and that was the only yeah. way they were able to ascertain what was supposed to be there well the newspaper strips are actually really easy to put together because all of the uh all of the artists put the date in the corner of each one of the strips true, true. Uh, so you can <clears throat> All of them have. I don't know if you okay. can see. Okay. Probably not. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, it's all it's all there. The so you know what year and what what the date is and everything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and some people keep better archives than others. The, Lynn Johnson herself, her company, they have it, had everything, you know, ready okay. to go, which was really. Omar, nice. I so apologize for interrupting you for Funky Winkerbean. I, I, <laughs> so, I, I apologize. It's, Bloom County. It's, you, it's your show. Well, yeah, Bloom you get County. A, you get a pass. You get a pass. It's, you, you're, it's, you're it's a, your you're show, and I won't do it again. <laughs> Oh man, Mr. Awesome has a comment. Uh, Curtis resembles less from Funky Winker Bean. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> no you know, offense. This, this character is a, is a loser of a character who can't get any girl. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Mr. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Mr. Awesome. <laughs> Mr. Awesome losing points.
sense right from the beginning. Okay, Winker Bean sounds like someone who shouldn't be allowed near school. <laughs> uh, and let me just, I just have one thing to say to the woke NATO. I appreciate 100% how he leaned into my teasing him and calling him the woke NATO. Changed it. He used to be the Clark NATO and I called him woke NATO. Woke NATO. And he took it exactly as he should have and just leaned <laughs> into it and started calling himself the woke NATO. Good job, Jeremy. You are, you are his name's like, that's where his origin began, huh? Right. Same with uncanny Omar. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, and I the think audience doesn't know, know I mean you. I a check for five dollars for copyrighted. Like, I'll take it. Yeah. All right, everybody, yeah. ready? Let's go ahead yeah. and get started. All right. Um, so, I always like to remind people that collected editions uh, in the solicits doesn't mean that they're coming out actually in August. Sometimes they're solicited for October, November, and sometimes even in December. The August title comes from the actual issues <laughs> that will be released. The single issues, the floppies, call them what you will. Those will be released in August of 2022. But we are getting a look at this, and this is uh, pre-orders for this stuff will go up Ooh. soon. Um, yeah, this is a book that a lot of people have been wanting, asking me, bugging me, when is this coming? <laughs> this is Civil War. They're like, these are the two events that haven't. I'm like, actually, there's a lot more events, but that's mm. another story. So House of M officially coming out. Let me know. Is this big enough, people? Let me know in the chat. Um, House of M. So you have the standard edition cover by Coipel. Mm -hmm. And let me see if I can do it. Olivier Coipel. Did I get it, Curtis? Sounds right to me. You don't know. Uh, <laughs> <and> then, <laughs> is that Ribich? I believe is how you pronounce oh, it. Oh, that's a good right? one. Um, how is that he, pronounced? He's doing. That's what I was told. Then again, it could be somebody messing with me. Uh, the direct <laughs> market. It's a. It's a bit hard to see the direct market cover. Yeah. Well. It's a, it's, I've got it maximized, man. Like that, that's, that's as big as it gets. Is that a little bit better or is that better? Yeah, you can see it there. It looks, it looks cool. Okay. Um, but this collects House of M one through eight, uh, Spider Man mini series, Fantastic Four mini, Iron Man mini, New Thunderbolts 11, Black Panther 7, Uncanny X Men 2, 462 to 465. Those are the issues that Alan Davis said. All right, Claremont, you're on your own. Um, Wolverine 33 to 35, Captain America number 10, Pulse 10, Cable and Deadpool 17, Cable and Deadpool, heck yeah, Incredible Hulk 83 to 87, New X Men 16 through 19, Exiles 69 through 71. There's a lot of stuff in here. Mutopia X 1 through 5. And if you were keeping track, that was District X. It became Mutopia during the House of M. Uh, Decimation House of M the day after, Giant Size, Miss Marvel number one, Secret. Secrets of the House of M, Pulse House M, House of M special, and Director's <laughs> Cut. That is a lot of House of M. 1,368 pages, $125. Wow. Omar, the uh, prelude story of House of M included in there. It is not. You don't. Uh, that would be included in Excalibur and I guess New Avengers, huh? So I assume <laughs> maybe there might be a, uh, you know, prologue to this. If it does well and maybe an aftermath because then you have this uh the stuff that cap happens during decimation that would be a cool i was bit. just gonna ask about decimation okay so that's after a different yeah time. so it only has the one shot which tells you which 100 and what was it 198 mutants still have their powers all right the one that i got to announce a couple days ago but the classic the original captain marvel omnibus and guess what they added volume one to it all those people that were worried that it didn't have a volume one worry no more <laughs> now just worry about <laughs> buying it i guess uh but you have the gil kane cover which is the standard edition cover which uh, that's the introduction to his new costume and then you have his first appearance costume by gene colon and that is the direct market cover. 888 pages, $100. Uh, collecting Marvel superheroes, 12 through 13. Captain Marvel, 1 through 33. Iron Man, 55. And Nod Brand, ech, number nine. Nice. Good job. Curtis. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, Omar. I didn't catch that. What was that last bit? I was clearing my throat. <laughs> Curtis, really quick. Um, should this also have the Avengers issue if it leads into Marvel, Captain Marvel 32? What was that Avengers issue? One. Oh yeah, um, it should. It's in the. Uh, I think they included in the in the Captain Marvel by Jim Starlin 
you know what I'm talking like, about? Like, yeah. it's the Jim Starlin issue that leads yeah. into it. And I, I can't remember seen... what I can't remember which issue it ties into with Captain Marvel. I think it's 32, isn't it? And and then it goes into Avengers 125. That's what it is. Yeah. And then because uh, somebody was telling me about it, and I'm like, oh yeah, it should be. So I'll be I'll be it's asking. Good. Um, and and if you know in the you're watching right now in the chat or comment later, please. No, the Iron Man issue is in there, but yep. I meant like uh, Avengers. I think it's 125. Yeah, because that's, that's Taylor. Like a... Taylor's excited. Yeah, he loves this. This is, this uh, is so good. Because, yeah, if this series has never been collected in its entirety other than Marvel Masterworks, I think, right? So it, that's uh, it's good that it's coming back out again. And I, I assume that this means that Epics will be down the road at some point as well. Well, here's something that I don't know if you all keep tabs. I know you keep tabs on Epics, but this, I mean, this and what, what else is Namor, I think? What's left from the Silver Age to go like the Omnibus format? Sar that's Sergeant funny. Fury. In the, okay, okay. Sergeant Fury. Oh, yeah, that's Fury. right. Ant-Man. Ant-Man. But did Ant-Man have an ongoing? In Tales well, of Tales, Tales to Astonish. Astonish. Yeah. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. <laughs> that doesn't deserve to be an omnibus form. <laughs> it so totally does. <laughs> Dude, Ant-Man didn't even... Never mind. That's another story. Uh, okay. Also, the scene... Uh, next Imagine Odd. How are you doing, buddy? We okay. Most Eastern European cases, <laughs> as with Rip Bitch, who's Croatian. Yeah, 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 I can't even read that. Okay, Avengers 125. <laughs> Thank you. That's what it was. Yep. So should yeah. that be collected in here? I would That's think so. Thinking. I think it should. Kurt, stop trying to make epics happen. I don't have to. They're already here. <laughs> Would you guys recommend it for a newcomer? The classic Captain Marvel? Marvel, sorry. Only um, if you I, like I, Silver Age stuff. Yeah, I, I, a yeah. newcomer to what? A newcomer to Marvel? To comic books in general? To, a newcomer Maybe to Captain what? Marvel. I think to Captain Marvel. A newcomer to Captain Marvel? On. I, I will say to me, I, I, I would only recommend the, you know, Jim Starlin. I was going to say, if you want to get into the character, Jim Starlin's uh, issues, which is the last part of this omnibus, are a phenomenal way to get into the character. Yes, yeah, so kind of give you a by half of it, of it by yeah. the second half. So yeah, that would be I, in volume two, because I think there's enough for three. Um, I've read nearly everything Starlin's ever done. I've not actually, like, I'm vaguely aware of everything Captain Marvel pre Starlin. I've not actually read it. I don't feel I'm missing out. So, I don't. I don't have the Shield Omni. I don't think they're collected in there. No, I think that's the just the Ranko stuff, right? The Shield that's Omni the shield stuff. It's only the Nick Fury Shield. Yeah, it's none of the yeah. Sergeant Fury stuff. What's up, Project Viking? This stuff uh, before the yeah. This is the stuff that actually there is some double dipping with the Thanos uh, Origins Omni. Hey, I don't like, like where I am in this time. Brady Bunch order. I know, man. I can't move. <laughs> I guess, let me I'm going to have to raise my chair. Oh, hey. There we wait go. A Hold on there a go. We solved that problem. You know what? Man, people see me all the time. There you go. All right. Uh, Captain Marvel. So let's keep going. Fantastic Four by John Byrne Omnibus Volume 2. For the first time, getting a reprint. So this has only been printed one time. And collecting the last, yeah, the last half of uh, John Burns' run, including his unfinished uh, issue, which is the Galacta story. So Fantastic Four, 261 to 295, annual 18 and 19, Alpha Flight 4, Thing number 10 and 19, Avengers, annual 14. By the way, the Thing Omnibus is still coming out. That will include all that. Plus material from Secret Wars 2, number 2. Epic Illustrated 26 through 34. What if 36? What the 2 and 10? Thing number 7, Fantastic Four Roast and Fantastic Four Special Edition. So this also includes the uh, Secret Wars 3 story, if I'm not mistaken. $125, 1,224 pages. This is, These are your covers, so both of them by John Byrne. Um, it, now, are they going to contain different... Were you saying... Are they going to contain different content than what was first put out? You no, say, no, no, no. Uh, as well? It'll be the same content. Um, okay. Although it, it makes printed. me think, I don't know how close. So people have been asking me, will the Daredevil by Frank Miller, which I'm going to talk about here in a second, uh, will that have the new masters that they use for the masterworks, the new scans? Right. That was going to well, be my question. Fantastic Four also had new scans too yeah. for volume enough for volume one. I don't know if they had enough time to put them with the omnibus. So I, I don't know. Um, 
It, I'm sure it will have a new design, though. I don't know about the spines. I know people probably don't <laughs> ask me about that. Once I get both of the covers with the dust jackets for Volume 1, I'll be happy to share those with on our social media. But I, I don't know yet. So Daredevil by Frank Miller and Klaus Jansen. Omnibus. Oh, look at that cover. 840 pages, $100. This is a, just a print reprint of the original uh, Daredevil by Frank Miller. And I think it was just Frank Miller during its first printing. And then it became Miller and Jansen during its second printing. Um, and I think it's had three printings. So this would be printing number four. In case wow. you missed it, now's your chance to get it. Uh, especially for that price. That's all I will say. So then it's probably because reprint volumes two and three were a little bit more than that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but what I was going to say is that this is the one that I'm asked if the new masterworks, if they're going to use those files for this. Right. I don't know yet. I will. Uh, as soon as I get an answer, I will let people know. I usually put that um, on my Saturday live streams. Um but yeah, so in this, you know, you have a direct market cover. It's just the classic 181. I love that cover. And then I think this was a poster, Curtis or Lars. Do y'all remember? I'd ask Jess, but I know. I I, oh, I only I only have the the standard one there. Um, this one here from 181. The, yeah, from 181. That new one is a I think amazing looking. The so yeah. that. Someone told me I, I've never seen that image before, but someone told me that it is from the eighties. Uh, some some image special okay. image that was made for the eighties. Yeah. Now I've been asked this, and believe me, as soon as I found out about this last year, I asked, would they be willing to include Daredevil one sixty two in here, which is the Steve Ditko issue? Right. Right. It has never been collected in any of the previous printings, Thanks. and I was told that's not Frank Miller. <laughs> Certainly and, not. <laughs> and I, as a completist, I said, "No." <laughs> I, 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 honestly, I have to agree. I mean, if, if it's not Frank Miller, and it's not something that impacts the ongoing continuity, well, that's enough. Wow. <laughs> this is the home of collected editions. <laughs> oh, I, I see. Oh, that was on the bottom square. Now, just to show you the and I don't misuse it. <laughs> no, just to show an embarrassment of riches we have. I got the uh, Daredevil Masterworks, uh, which was the first third of the Miller run. And yeah. now I have this existential crisis of do I keep getting the Masterworks or do I get that tasty omnibus? And so I will probably be huddled in the corner, uh, sobbing as a gelatinous mass as to which of these I should get. But it's a good time to be a geek. Yeah, that's a real I, that's a real issue for geeks. Uh, yeah. If you upgrade from the the masterworks after you've been collecting them for a while mm -hmm. that actually sounds like a first world problem which it is but it's a it's yeah. an issue for us i know that this is that steve ditko it was a fill-in issue but for how do i put this and gosh dang it this is the one time curtis can just one-up me with you know that's actually going to be in the epic collection. I was going to say that. <laughs> oh, yeah, it should be in the epic collection. <laughs> and the original coloring, too. You it's don't know that yet. There's no oh. mention of epics of <laughs> Miller's Daredevil. Uh, you yeah. know what? I hope it gets new colors. <laughs> I, 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 don't think it, I don't think it's unreasonable that when a book is framed as being of a creator, that you not stuff it with things that are not by that creator. But that's yeah. just I mean, it's happened before, though. Like, it, it's happened since. It has I mean, happened, basically, right? they're using the exact same map that they've used for over 10 years, right? So yes, that's what they're doing. And, it, and it is easy to send that file over to the printer and say, just reprint this. Instead of like, oh. But what about all the people who are going to be sitting there going, why did you put this issue in there? It makes no sense. Okay, all five of you can get together <laughs> and start a freaking, like, filler issue anonymous. You know, they could just stick it at the back of the book with a little note saying, this issue was fill-in. Bingo. Bingo. Here. There you go. Curtis. There's a bonus You're for hired. you right here. Uh, it, what, one issue probably doesn't make much difference either way. Where I do get slightly annoyed is when they have such an expansive view of continuity that they put in enough extra issues in there that I'm like, okay, I could have been getting charged 25 bucks less. You know, right. then it makes uh, Curtis, how do you pronounce this word? 
preface. <laughs> preface. Okay. Which is the way Dang. I was pronouncing it. And then an English teacher told me it was preface. Preface. What? No, 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 no. I, you can ask no. my wife. And I said, no, it's not. You're messing with me because English is my second language. Stop it. <laughs> Your second language. Preface it. Oh, this is like, Jurgens. Jurgens. Yeah, which is exactly what Curtis was saying. Absolutely. I think that would make sense. But, you know, it, it's one of those things that's not a deal breaker for a lot of people that don't own it. I'm sure they're going to buy it regardless. The issue will be when Lars sees that it has the new scans and it also includes issue 162. <laughs> Uh, then I then I will buy one just to burn it. Yeah, no, yeah, no, it's no, it's, <laughs> it, it, it's fine within the realm of all stand. By the way, you know, Omar, and you're doing it correctly. You you've given me a, a paroxysm over how to pronounce George Perez. I feel like you're pronouncing George's name correctly, and I've been pronouncing it so vulgar all these years. No, it's okay. Nobody pronounces my name right. It's not actually Omar. It's actually Omar. Omar. Oh it's, God. Right. It's the uncanny Omar. What I, kind see, of accent was that? I don't know. <laughs> I said that better, something hey, that better been your Krakoan accent. That was my Croatian accent. Well, let's stick with Krakoan. <laughs> Krak Krakoan. That was my Assad Ribic <laughs> accent. Oh. All right. This anyway. is the Fantastic Four. Uh, oversized hardcover, volume three by Dan Slott, collecting Fantastic Four 21 through 30, Empire Zero, uh, Empire Fallout, Fantastic Four. 304 pages. $44.99. Uh, Honestly, this is where I s lost interest in this run of Fantastic Four. I was on board and loving the first two, and then this one... Wait, the, wait. Er, Curtis, that's not an epic. How are you reading these? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good old Marvel Unlimited. Okay, okay. That makes a lot more sense. So is this all about Empire, then? Is that what made you lose interest? Um, Go ahead, it, yeah, the Empire, partly because I hadn't been reading any of the other Empire stuff. And then the storyline after this goes in a completely different direction as well. And I'm like, okay. I was on the fence reading the Empire stuff. And then after that, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm stopping. <laughs> I got to wait till they uh, go on to a new story arc or something. Mm. But um, having said that, I do really... Actually, the, the part that I did like out of the Empire stuff is the two kids that Ben Grimm eventually ends up adopting. And... Um, no oh, spoiler that, alert! Spoiler alert! Yeah, the the relationship there is, is really great. I like how they portray that. And I was all in uh, Empire. Yeah, the, the 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 run itself like gets um. There's a lot of people that hate it. A lot of people that love it. A lot of people that don't. Yeah, you know, they're just it's not for them. But I it like any other run. I think it's had its ups and downs. For sure, absolutely. Conan the Barbarian. Look at that. Todd McFarlane and Jim Lee cover. What? The Barbarian. The original Jim's Marvel Years Omnibus Volume 10, collecting issues 241 to 275. And material from what then? Number 12, $150. So that is, I think that's our most expensive Conan, the color version of Conan, not the Savage Sword of Conan. 944 pages. Um, so. Golly. This is it. This is the final volume, right? This is the final volume, yeah. Oh, Unless they do the, the 90s era of Conan. And oh, yeah. That hasn't been announced yet. Right. Uh, this uh, covers, man. That's your standard edition cover here by McFarland and then Jim Lee with Conan versus Red Sonia. Any of you guys, Conan guys? I have read the first epic collection and it was really great. So I uh, I hadn't read any other Conan before that. I read the first four of each. Uh, and then that's where I had to stop because I couldn't collect all 10 of each. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But ten. I love, Savage I, Sword is going to have like 15. <laughs> I, I know. That's where I cut it off. And I loved the first four of each. Um, this this one here is the return of Roy Thomas to the character. So uh, I'm curious how this will how this will be done, considering well, I, yeah. this is '90s Conan, early. Honestly, 90s Conan. A, a lot of the reason why Roy Thomas is was also because of John Buscema. Uh, like the mm. two of them together, oh, gotcha. the, the visual storytelling of John Buscema uh, made Roy Thomas's plots even better. And without that, I don't know if it's going to be the same. Yeah. When I was growing up, you know, this is one of the titles I didn't read just because I couldn't read anything, everything for various reasons. And, you know, this was a 
completely different genre. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, that's not to slag on the people working on it. You know, there was a lot of good talent on this book, but it just wasn't a genre I was interested in. Um, it wasn't until the Kurt uh, Busiek, um, it was a Gary Nord's mm. run on uh, Dark Horse that got me interested in, and I loved it. Yeah. So, and I had read the prose, like the short stories and stuff, when I was mm. younger, but I had never, I, I had always seen the Conan uh, covers at the comic shop. I just never had a chance to get them. Uh, Incredible Hulk by Peter David Omnibus Volume Two. That's going back to print. Wow. Uh, yeah. So that's amazing. Good, so fast. Good for Peter David. Yeah. Yeah. When's Peter this David. January. Okay. Yeah. You guys have, you guys, like, that to me is like the Hulk run. Like, I love that. Yeah, stuff. I, I already own this one. Yeah. Uh, um, this is good stuff. I have these and just haven't got to them yet. Both covers will be available. I love the direct market cover. It's so awesome. Uh, Marvel Masterworks Spider Woman, Volume 3. Now we got Chris Claremont jumping in here, right? 26 through 38. Yeah. And the first appearance of Siren. Mm -hmm. 288 pages, $75. This is the only... <clears throat> This and uh, Ghost Rider mm -hmm. and Dazzler are the only ones I collect in Marvel Masterworks. So I will definitely be getting this. And did I read in the comments about some Dazzler hate from Curtis? Are you For not me? a Dazzler fan? <laughs> <laughs> Look at Curtis. He looks shocked. I, uh, a... I haven't read this. I'm, I'm not a... I'm not not a Dazzler fan. I just haven't read a single issue of that series, so I can't well, really say otherwise. Not not only is Curtis not a Dazzler hater, uh, he dresses up as Dazzler most of the time. That's my club persona. Yes. <laughs> yeah. well, I just uh, got Curtis. that from what the what the chat was, so I I didn't know what how. I what think he got he got into it with a uh, uh, Rebel by Design because he was hating on uh, Dazzler. He was like, I don't think there should be Dazzler epic collections. <laughs> oh, I will welcome <laughs> Dazzler <laughs> epic collections. <laughs> <laughs> On the point of continuity, we sometimes grossly overestimate the need to read everything because because when I was reading X Men, you know they have a scene where they come in to break the news to Banshee that by the way you have a daughter you never knew about, and with just a little tag like oh this was covered in Spider Woman. I hadn't read that issue. Did it really change things? It didn't. I was able to follow along. And go okay, you know they're breaking the news to him that he has this daughter that he didn't know about. So sometimes the need to read everything is overrated. <laughs> Dazzler cosplay just makes yeah. you feel sick. It does. It does. Yeah. yeah. So yes, Dazzler has. Is that Jess with? I I do not know. <laughs> uh, we are into the alien costume saga for Marvel Masterworks. Yeah. That's crazy. The Tom DeFalco. Ooh, we are era. old. We are old. Wow. Two fifty two to two sixty two. Amazing Spider Man. Number 18. No, I think I remember making a statement. I said, okay, I'm officially old. I don't know who Bad Bunny is when a news <laughs> broke that Bad Bunny was casted in who a the hell Spider is Man Bad Bunny? movie. And Bad I, Bunny, like, I heard I'm, uh, I'm officially old. I don't know who Bad Bunny is. Sony no is optioning Bad Bunny for a movie, I think. Yeah, that's how we found out that there was a Bad Bunny. Yeah, that's how I found movie. out. There's this thing called a Bad Bunny. Yeah. Uh, so collecting Amazing Spider-Man 252 to 262, Amazing Spider-Man annual number 18, volume 24 of the Amazing Spider-Man for those Marvel Masterworks folks. Strange. So this is the new series by Jed McKay, a follow-up to the death of Doctor Strange. So stay, Strange number one through five, that cover might be a spoiler. Uh -huh. Sorry. I think so. She's not a doctor, right? So that's why she's not called Doctor Strange. Yet she but is going to night school. Strange. She is, yeah. <laughs> Evil so, Doctor College. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's up, PJ Kicks? How you doing, brother? I didn't know Bad Bunny existed until they gave him his own McFlurry. His own McFlurry. Why is that a thing? <laughs> how is this? Who the hell is Bad Bunny and how does he get his own McFlurry? He's like there should the be an Omni Dog rapper, McFlurry. Dude. The Omni Dog McFlurry. <laughs> yeah, come on. All right. I don't support that. <laughs> Spider-Man 2099, Exodus, Steve Orlando, uh, Paul Fry, Dave Watcher, Marco Castillo. So this is Spider-Man Alpha or 2099 Exodus Alpha, Exodus miniseries, mm -hmm. and Exodus Omega. Hmm. That's a lot of artists. 
Is it Clea, a princess, daughter of Dormammu? No, she is the no, daughter she... of Umar. Yeah, she's the daughter of Bad Bunny. <laughs> no, she is not. Shut up enough about Bad Bunny. <laughs> um, all right. Gwenverse. Look at that cover. That's great. That is good. Gwenverse. Spider-Gwen Gwenverse. So Tim Seeley. It, the cover is by David Nakayama. So collecting the five issue miniseries of Gwenverse. What if Miles Morales? Oh, that's it. What if Miles Morales? <laughs> <laughs> what if, what he if Miles Morales did what? Okay. What if Miles Morales one through five? So I guess they're all what if stories uh, featuring him. Paco Medina, Cody Ziegler, John Ridley. Hey, there's some pretty good uh, creators there. Yes. Oh, this huh. oh, Hulk wow. Grand cool. Design Treasury Edition. $34.99. This is all done by Jim Rugg. I, think, um, I don't know if you all... I, up I know it. Jim Rugg. I am just amazed that he's getting to do this. I always thought of him as kind of an alternative underground artist maybe i'm wrong well, well no, that's kind of I mean, why look, he's doing this. look at the look at the way that they did uh fantastic four okay or or for that matter uh x-men grand design right like ed pisker ed pisker yeah right okay. so, so these are this is the way marvel's sort of experimenting and actually hitting a home run with each one of these with these kind of alternate alternative artists and writers that's an that's a that's great I've so heard these are great. These are the treasury editions. So they're they're oversized. They're big books. Like uh, uh, they're soft covers, but they're big books here. Like like this one here, the Demon Days. This is the X Men one. They're beautiful. I love I love these books. I think they're some of the best books that Marvel puts out there, along with the uh, gallery editions. And the gallery editions are the hard covers. <laughs> I didn't know a comic book kids be near mint until I saw near mint condition. Do you even near you mint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you? Oh, let me show you the picture I have on my desktop still of Omar near minting. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> can I share ben, my screen here? Let me try and share my screen. Yeah, you can share your dumb screen. It's going to just break everything. <laughs> uh, Venom, Lethal Protector. My wife loves this series, and she was – Asking, when are we going to get the trade paperback? And I said, I don't know. I didn't even know it was a series. Uh, but it is David. Why are you Mancini. asking me? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> It is David Michelini returning to the character that he co-created. Uh, collecting Venom, Venom Lethal Protector 1 through 5. Now, that can be confusing because Venom Lethal Protector was a series in the 90s. But this is the new series of 2022. And Melanie digs it? Yeah, she loves Venom. I don't know why. <laughs> uh let's we won't start the comparison no but... no do you do you sleep with one eye open i mean i hope so. <laughs> i always have <laughs> marvel voices okay so this is the latest marvel voices they've had pride identity legacy women of marvel and now it's heritage so these are the native american characters like warpath and moonstar or i don't know what she goes by anymore Echo, and I think that is the new um, the guy that took over Jack Russell. Oh my gosh, Werewolf by Night. Okay. Uh, champion, yeah. So it's it, it is Native American voices. And, and Thunderbird's no longer dead, so maybe Thunderbird. Hmm. Shh. What's with all the spoilers today? Oh, what? He's not dead. <laughs> He's dead. Thunderbird <laughs> has to stay dead. <laughs> Otherwise, Warpath doesn't have an idea. He's like Uncle Ben. He has to. <laughs> Captain Carter. Warpath can still have an identity because the Hellions are still, or are they alive now? Hellions better be alive. That's the best <laughs> book oh, that I've read in the past few years. No, I mean the Hellions uh, from the White Queen's Hellions. Well, ever since the Krakoa era, more or less everybody's not been not. It's really interesting to hear guys talk about this Krakoa era. Well, no, no, Curtis, you haven't kept, you haven't read a single issue from the Krakoa era. Have you? Oh, no, I was referring to read... the Hellions of Krakoa yeah. era. I apologize. Yeah. No, it's okay. It's a good book, Hellions. Krakoa. What did you say, it is a good book. <laughs> I read the first few issues of X Men and then um, and tried to figure out how to read them all in continuity and couldn't figure it out, so I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I should get those uh, House of X trades. You, uh, 
I in my library there's a whole dawn of X uh, explanation. If you want to go into my library to how to read those books, I, I was just I explaining dawn of. I better have been in that episode. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I explained all the Dawn of X and how to read it, how to get into it. And oh, yeah, okay. no, Omar, okay. I, I, I didn't mention Uncanny you. Uncanny Omnidog over there. <laughs> the one X Men thing I know about that. <laughs> one X Men thing. <laughs> all right. Next up is X Men Red, Al Ewing's latest series. Ooh. So they canceled Sword and then it rolled over to Red. So, and again, this um, is good. Collecting issues one through five. I haven't read it. I cannot wait to read well, it. Well, again, only issue one is out, but I have read that and I greatly enjoyed it. Okay. I also heard that it, I haven't read it, but I heard that it was really good. I think from somebody in the chat, Max Appleman said that X-Men Red was really good. Yeah. yeah he also told me the same thing. And I heard Immortal X-Men is great. And that is, is, of course, uh, Kieran Gillen. So yep. I can't wait to read that. Uh, Reign of X, Volume 16. I assume this era is about to wrap up because now we're getting into the... Oh my gosh, what is the latest era called? The, uh, the era of where X. Jess bails. No, you're not going to bail. It's X-Men. Uh, <laughs> Destiny of X. Destiny of X. <laughs> yeah. Destiny of X. Or Destiny of... Yeah. So, Collecting Cable Reloaded, X-Men Trial of Magneto 3 through 5, and Wolverine number 14. Peter, there, Je there we go. Uh, there go we ahead, go. Curtis. Yes. Hey, Curtis. Awesome. The, the best thing in this catalog right here, Peter Porker, Red. the spectacular Spider-Ham. <laughs> Do not miss this one. You will not be sorry. <laughs> I am going to assume you are being 100% serious and get yes. this. <laughs> but if you say, if you're being sarcastic and I get this, which is it? <laughs> I don't know you well enough, Curtis. Which is it? Do any of you know me well enough? Which is it, guys? Which is it? <laughs> no, he lo he actually loves. Well, I love Spider Ham, so <laughs> you know. You you need to if you enjoy um, the uh, what the or not brand eh kind of stuff, then I think you'll enjoy Spider Ham too. However, this has a lot of the current modern Peter Porker stories, and I haven't read any of those, so I can't mm. comment. But this does have um, all of the the backup stories in Marvel Tales, which was a Spider Man reprint series for the longest time and the mm -hmm. when this in the 70s when those comics were only like 17 pages long uh they needed when they were reprinting them in the era where it was 22 pages they needed some backup stories so they filled it with peter porker stories and those are all collected in this volume here well i see taylor talks comics says you're being 100 percent sincere but that sincere but then mr awesome says if you enjoy Alf, you'll love Spider Ham. So now I'm back to not <laughs> wanting this book. Alf is fantastic as well. You, if you haven't, if you say you don't like Alf, it's because you haven't read Alf, uh, and you are broken inside. <laughs> all of that is fair. Broken inside. Broken inside, and broken I haven't number. read it. Oh, he's got an Alf shirt. <laughs> I am broken uh, inside. At this moment, I just want to remind everybody to hit that like button. <laughs> Thank you. Like, um, like if you like Elf. <laughs> when Curtis is done dressing as Dazzler in the evenings, he goes Jared to man. sleep in an Elf costume. <laughs> so, is X? Are you saying X Force is is being is back to being good? So, I feel like X Force and Wolverine took a big dip for me. But if you're saying it's back to being good, because I like the way it started, I thought it was great. So, um, who was it that wrote that? Akidesu? Yeah, let me know if, if that's what you're saying. If you're saying that it's good again, I felt the Wolverine stuff was it was it was, it was good, but it was just very disposable. Um, X Force, X Force actually had a couple of issues in there that were really good, but it was a bit uneven. <laughs> Curtis wore an Alf shirt on Omar show. Jess is directing people to his channel for X Men videos. This is <laughs> Troll Omar <laughs> Day, it's an alternate universe. What kind of dude? <laughs> What kind of bizarro <laughs> universe that I wake up in? Uh, Moon Girl in Dangerous Species. This is, um, I think, this is the new series. Or no, it's Miles Morales and Moon Girl, Avengers and Moon Girl, and X-Men and Moon Girl. Nice. Now my kid will really like Moon Girl. So, All right, Curtis. Here's your epics, buddy. Okay, Conan, the original Marvel Years, Volume 6, Vengeance in Asculan. This is, this is uh, we're, I, we're not even at issue number 100 for Conan epics, and we're already in volume six. They're taking their sweet time with this, especially since there are 270 issues in this series. 
Well, you but, might as well but, upgrade to the omnibus editions because those are wrapping up. Yep. <laughs> By the time this one wraps up, your epic collections. Very happy to talk Ooh. about this one. Oh yeah. Yep. yep. Moon yep. Knight. Volume Curtis, four. Curtis, why are we happy to talk about this? Well, we didn't know if this volume was coming. If this is it's been about yeah. four years since we've seen a Moon Knight epic collection, and there was no word whether or not they would go past the original Doug mentioned Bill Sinkevich run. And this is it. Uh we have a what is it, the um, Marvel, the Fist of Conchu miniseries, one to six, uh, Marvel Team Up, one forty four, Marvel Fanfare, Mark Spector, Moon Knight. So this is uh, this gives us hope that there will be more Moon Knight volumes in the future because this is just the beginning of the nineteen ninety or the the nineties run of Mark Spector Moon Knight, which lasted like sixty issues or something, right? Sixty six, I think, and ended with the Stephen uh, Platt run of Moon Knight. Mm -hmm. Man, bit of an oversight on Marvel's part to not have more copies of Epic Volume One of Moon Knight in stock for the TV show to come out. Because well, they yeah they um so the TV show got delayed, and they did true. reprint That's all true. three of the Moon Knight Epic collections, but the first one yeah has now sold that new printing has sold out as well. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So here we go, Omar. To answer your earlier question, um. Uh, is that a picture of me wearing your doc? <laughs> it is, yeah. It was... <laughs> is that, that when I came over? <laughs> yeah, that, I don't know. <laughs> Even <laughs> next imagine it's getting in on this. I, I which I, <laughs> I think would ever happen. But yeah, that's that you. That is so creepy. Not only am I in your house, I'm wearing your dog mask. Uh, <laughs> if it wasn't me, I'd say that is creep factor. Dan. Uh, Omar, to answer your earlier question, I think the only other Marvel Masterwork Silver Age titles that have not yet. Uh, been omnibus size, omnibide, omnibus, whatever. Uh, Rawhide Kid, Inhumans, and Submariner. Inhumans is a crime that that hasn't been uh, collected yet in the early stuff in omnibus format. Crime. Um, okay. Just saying. Well, we're trying to make Inhumans happen. <laughs> I am trying hard. Yeah, you and Geo. Actually, you know, I'm surprised it hasn't, but maybe if the rumors are true about. What's gonna appear in the Doctor Strange movie? Maybe they'll do an Inhumans thing. I don't. I really don't know. Um, Omar, is there any? Is there going to be a reprint of Lemire's Moon Knight? Yeah, Lemire's Moon Knight is already out of print. The complete collection. The complete collection's already it's, out. It's gone. Yeah, the Jed McKay first volume was gone, and Marvel just restocked it. I think, or will be restocking it this wow. week or next week. Um, because volume two comes out soon ish, but yeah, that Moon Knight is selling. It's crazy because I didn't think I don't hear enough people talk about the show, uh, or the people that I do hear talk about the show, mainly me and Amanda. I guess I'm the only two people I talk to about <laughs> the show. We're not digging the show at first, but now you know it's kind of picked back up. But I don't know, it, I, I didn't expect it to, to go over well, which makes me happy, right? Which makes me think, well, maybe one day we'll get a Moon Knight epic or Moon Mark Spectre Moon Knight on the bus. That would be awesome. Although, although it may not have actually bumped sales that much. It's just that they don't have that many copies to start with. I mean, right, but they usually we ought to piece on, and if it's a volume one of something, you well, exactly. don't, yes, don't no. in print. I yeah. know. Yeah, no, so, I agree. But, but, but like, you know, the Walking Dead TV show galvanized like tons of the comic to be sold unbelievable amounts and we kind of assume that sort of thing is going to happen every time there's a tv show and that really doesn't happen mm -hmm. um so we but, think yeah. but but i don't know this is the most popular moon knight has been i love it it actually has there's a lot of people that oh, certainly. talking about moon i'm knight. just so surprised that i don't remember that much publicity i mean about lemire's moon knight when it came out in hardcover and it sold out immediately and now you're telling me the complete collection's already sold out for Lemire, I, I mean, I love that book, but I'm just uh, shocked that it's already sold out after the uh, the hardcover has had been so hard to find. That's there's a I don't know if it's I, Lemire I think it's or Lemire. Moon Knight or both. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, what's up, Johnny? In my opinion, this Moon Knight show bumped up the book sales more than Loki or One Division. It's very noticeable on my end. <laughs> Let's go Mets, dying breed. That. That partly really? it could partly could be because you know to the TV viewers, Moon Knight's a completely new property, whereas Loki and Wanda and Vision had you know been uh, okay. I think this yep. is the first time I've ever read heard this. Uh, it's not as good as the Iron Ah, the, the, okay. the TV show. <laughs> oh, it's a group of only one that feels that way. <laughs> 
TV and movies make a world of difference, right? And even for new people. But I can't imagine that many new people like that are watching Moon Knight going, hey, you know, man, I think I'm going to buy one of those big $125 books. Yeah, that, well, that, yeah <laughs> I really want to get into Moon Knight. That's just it. We assume that every time a new property comes out on a movie it's or more, TV, that people are like, mm, I must go buy those overpriced comic books. It's, it's and, us. They're, and they're they buying those, them, right? Yeah. And then yeah. the new people, the newcomers are buying those trades. So, um, yeah. Well, if it, again, if at all, sometimes there is no bump appreciably. Have um, you noticed in each of the episodes of Moon Knight, <laughs> there's a QR code? And if you scan the QR code, it takes you to an issue of Moon Knight? Yeah, it took the first one took you to his yeah. first appearance. I've only noticed it in volumes one or episodes one and two. I didn't notice it in three and four. His there first was... appearance, which is very different from the TV show. I'm not. Yeah. That might be very different. It, oh, yeah. it, it, it is. <sighs> no, never mind. That's a spoiler. So never mind. Um, wait, wait, well, for the TV show, it's okay to spoil a comic book that came out in the 1970s. But... Wait, yeah. <laughs> wait, Chris, no, Iron Fist Netflix wasn't great, but it's still better than most Disney Marvel. Uh, I, no, no, I don't agree with I, that. I can't, I cannot agree no. with that. You were entitled uh, to your opinion, but nobody agrees with it. <laughs> no, no, I see. No, 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 the guy that played Iron Fist totally agrees with him. He wants that job back. <laughs> and it just it it was a, just a mess because it wasn't like the choreograph was horrible. The fighting sequences were great. I did appreciate Colleen Wig though; she was easy mm. on the eyes. Well, I, as a matter uh, of fact, if you just want to cancel all of Iron Fist and make me a Colleen Wig show with that actress, I'm good with that. I'm good I, found, with I found Iron Fist. I only watched season one, but I I found it perfectly watchable. I mean, it wasn't great, but it was it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, it's 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 smirch, you I'm sorry. It. Oh man, it's <laughs> merged. Michael, you, you never mind. Play, Michael agrees with you, Chris. Michael agrees with you, so that's good. All right, all right. <laughs> I, you don't even need to make Colleen Ironwing. I just watched her in. Uh, so apparently, people did like it. I think I watched like four episodes, and I was like, I think I'm done. Wolverine Epic Collection: Back to the Basics. This is a reprint of Volume Two. In case you missed it, Volume One was printed twice, right? Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's going for it. It's going to hit its third printing later on yeah. in 2022. Yeah. So, okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Morbius, I visited humans are three best Marvel property. <laughs> <laughs> adaptation. Yikes. Uh, um, this is why we're talking about Empire. What's happening? Avengers Epic Collection or Epic Collection, the mm. Collection Obsession. That is a name based on us. Yep. It is. It is uh, nice. It is a new printing. If you look and close. Our awesome. faces are on those figures. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. That's that's us holding all of our Mar Marvel Legends. <laughs> <laughs> I have all the action figures now. Yeah. I'm surprised. <laughs> like a toy photographer has not recreated that cover. <laughs> Just write that down and beat. Uh, what's I'm on the phone it? right now to SSD Toys to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Because that is the perfect cover to recreate with your Marvel Legends. Although, I don't think they've made toys of the characters on the right-hand side there. Uh, Venom <laughs> Epic Collection Volume 5. So we're skipping a few volumes. Three and four. Right, Curtis? Is that right? Yeah, we're skipping those because Venom Epic Collection Volume 3 is going to contain Maximum Carnage in its entirety. And they just released Maximum Carnage in its entirety in a Carnage Epic Collection. So mm -hmm. I'm sure they don't want so much. To answer Joe's business. question, is this included in the Omni? This is included in Omnibus Volume 2. Yeah. I'm not mistaken. Venom two. Omnibus 2? Ven Omnibus. Mm -hmm. Ven Omnibus 2. Yeah. Ven That's Omnibus. the one, uh, hit, the infamous Omnibus Volume 2. <laughs> uh, Star Wars. Oh, look at that cover, man. I love the Crimson Guard. Those guys are great. Uh, Legends, Epic Collection, The New Republic. Collecting Empire, Crimson Empire 0 through 6, Bounty Hunters, Kenix Kill, Crimson Empire 2, Council of Blood 1 through 6, Crimson Empire 3, Empire Lost, and Dark Horse Extra 21 through 24, and Dark Horse Presents number 1. If you are big oh. fans of the Crimson Empire, this is the one for you. Hmm. I don't know if there are any of those fans. Leave silence, there. no. I, I, I like the way they look, and I'm in. I've been enjoying the crap out of reading the Legacy era, or I'm sorry, the Legends era of Star Wars, which is the Dark Horse era. No. 
Uh, Spider-Man, Spider-Verse, Amazing Spider-Man. This is the graphic novel. I think just introducing you to different characters throughout the Spider-Verse. Marvel-Verse, Black Panther. Heck of a cover. Marvel-Verse, Shuri. So this collects Shuri 1, 6 through 7, Marvel. Actually, I think this has already been printed. I want to say this might be a restock. Maybe because of the movie coming out. Uh, Miss Marvel. Generations. This is the graphic novel size book, so smaller mm -hmm. scales. Mm -hmm. And Mighty Marvel Masterworks Black Panther. Uh, Mighty Marvel Masterworks Black Panther 1, The Claws of the Panther. Look at that looks, Michael show cover, man. My, my kids yeah. love the Mighty Marvel Masterworks. Uh, for those people that have been asking me, they are continuing the Mighty Marvel Masterworks line just because when we did like the upcoming Marvel Collected Editions from August to December, I think November, December, we're missing some, but they are continuing ne next year. Good. Uh, so this collects uh, Fantastic Four 52 and 53 and 56. Captain America 100. So it's done in the style of uh man, Curtis. I think this is this is better than an epic collection. This is this yeah. is done in the style of the omnibus. Yeah. Like it's not missing anything. No, oh. that was one of my complaints about the 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 first um Black Panther epic collection is it has the or, the two-part Fantastic Four origin, then it skips right to the Don McGregor series, and it doesn't have any of this in between stuff, which I think some of it's important. It introduces some some of the main characters and uh, uh, and you know further explores Black Panther before he gets his own title. So I would have liked to see this stuff in there, but it is what it is. This is a nice. You are question. not alone, Matt. A lot of people want a reprint of uh, or a new printing and a new Miss Marvel Omnibus Volume Two. Yeah, I have an omnibus and three OHCs, right? Yeah, Ms. Marvel. And yeah, yeah. Is Honestly, Ms. Marvel, Marvel, oh, you guys one? are talking about the Moon Knight show. Okay. Is Last Marvel episode. Out of Sorry, print? we'll stay out of the comment section. Um, is Ms. Marvel out of print, the Omni? I think volume one is out of print, yes. Oh, wow. Um, and at this moment, I just want to let people know, if you live in Europe, don't forget to check out waltzcomicshop.com. They're out of Berlin, Germany. They have uh, flat rate shipping to all euro or eu countries for nine euro 90 cents it's waltzcomicshop.com and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout to get free shipping for all eu countries with your first order and if you live in germany i think it's only four euro and 90 cents if i'm not mistaken for flat rate shipping all your emails will be answered in 24 hours or less with all your questions not sure what kind of questions uh <laughs> that you'll have Come Why are you sponsoring questions. Omar alright let's go back and do a retake for the people that missed it then we'll talk about the books that we are most excited about that's something that I always like to ask people All right so just a quick recap House of M Omnibus coming out Captain Marvel Omnibus Volume 1 keep in mind now it is a Volume 1 uh, who, who, who sounds like Kermit the Frog is that you? one of you guys can you guys do a Kermit the Frog. I think Curtis, you look like you can. You want it now. <laughs> and I don't mean that as a, like an insult. I just mean like you look like you're you can do different voices. All right, oh Kermit the Frog here. Oh, good. Uh, wow. yeah, this, is my, this is my Kermit voice. I don't know how good it is, but it's uh, you know, it's good. I actually, you know, hold on a second. I happen to have this right beside me. Were you getting the lyrics to uh, it, uh, "Not Easy Being Green"? Holy crap! Oh my God. Or what? <laughs> Why Go are there so many songs about <laughs> rainbows? <laughs> and what's on you know what? the other side? Wow! This is amazing. <laughs> do it again. Do I, it again. I, I was going to have a go at it, but I don't think I can top that. No way! I'm not even trying now. No. Um. <laughs> I'm going to say that that is my mutant ability. I can usually look at people's faces and see who can do a good Kermit voice. <laughs> that is the lamest mutant power. He I had the up. puppet and he did the song. I I didn't think I could respect Dude, that wasn't even just... planned. Unless I know. Okay, I um I for just for the three of you, I've got something to show you, a video to show you after uh, the live stream. Is over. Mm. <laughs> well, you have your clothes on in that video because I'm not being <laughs> I'm not being tricked it's again. Not, I always my dad's costume. 
<laughs> it's lovely when someone tells me I have a video to show you in private. Do you see, uh, yeah, War of the Kings is coming back in the print. I think I announced it a couple of months ago, and it will be out November, I believe. So, yep, just go back and check out the, the announcement mm. video. Daredevil by Miller and Jansen, mm. the new printing. Fantastic Four by Dan Slott, Volume 3, Oversized Hardcover. Conan the Barbarian. But, oh, interesting. Okay, oh, the that must have been when they changed the logo. Uh, the Jim Lee direct market cover and the Todd McFarlane standard edition cover. That's going to be hard. <laughs> like, which one to get? Because they're both great. Incredible Hulk Omnibus Volume 2 coming back. I think this was originally solicited for November of this year, but now it is January of 2023. Uh, Marvel Masterworks Spider-Woman, which is one of Jess's there we go. books that's coming out. Uh, Michael Flacher's last run, I think, and then Chris Claremont coming in, J.M. DeMatteis. Spider-Man Marvel Masterworks Volume 24. Strange Volume One. I belong to death. Let's Ooh. not read about that because I might wow. spoil what happens. <laughs> uh, Spider Man 2099 Exodus. So, collecting the Alpha, Exodus 1 through 5, and Omega Gwenverse. Yeah, she doesn't have an ongoing anymore. So, I assume maybe they might try to make enough for a volume two of a Gwen or uh, Spider Gwen. Spider Gwen. Gwen. I thought she was going as Ghost Spider these days. I thought so too. Wait. Now known as Ghost Spider. Yep, she is. Oh. What if Miles Morales? All right, so what if Miles Morales became Wolverine, Captain America, the Hulk, Thor? And I assume issue five is what if Miles Morales mind like minded his own business? Because like, it's just him. He's constantly. I don't see anybody else he turned into. Uh Jim Rugg, Hulk Grand Design, baby. This is the Treasury edition coming out. Venom Lethal Protector. Look at that cover's awesome. Palo Siqueira. And this collects the five issue mini. There's another Marvel Voices coming out. This time around, it's Heritage with Native American characters. Uh, Captain Carter. This is the mini series, issues one through five. X Men Red. Oh, man, I like that. What happened to Agent Brand? Why is she back there? Don't answer that. <laughs> Lars, I feel like Lars knows. Reign of X, Volume Sixteen. Peter Parker, the spectacular. Curtis's favorite. I know it now. Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, Endangered Species. Conan the Barbarian, Epic Collection. <laughs> El Muerto. I think we're gonna get a Bad Bunny on the this first. <laughs> like. <laughs> I want a, a Bad Bunny's favorite stories from Marvel. If Bad Bunny's getting a movie, I want Curtis getting a, a movie as the new voice <laughs> of Kermit. Okay, well, you can petition for that on your uh, Matt My X show that you do. So, <laughs> or whatever you're doing over there on Omni Dog's Vault. Moon Knight Epic Collection Butcher's Moon for the first time ever. Mark Spector Moon Knight. The first seven issues are going to be collected in a collected edition format. Wolverine Epic Back to the Basics. This is volume two, um, back in print, and Avengers Epic Collection, the Collection Obsession, back in print. Venom, volume five. Star Wars, man, there's a lot of epics, Curtis. Star Wars Legends, epic. Remember when there only used to be like one epic every so often? I know, it's literally one a week right now. Uh, I think this week we didn't have any. Next week, though. Next, next week we've got three. <laughs> So it all, Dude, it all next, week, <laughs> next week <laughs> omnis and oh man um spider-man spider-verse amazing spider-man and marvel verse black panther and shuri coming back miss marvel generations and black panther mighty marvel masterworks volume one already mapped better than the epic collection <laughs> shots fired all right one book gentlemen what is the book that you're most excited for? Kurt, or actually, Omnidog. Why don't you go first, sir? Um, I'm going to keep everything I already have of House of M. And I think I have all the other books. Okay. Or else in some format. So I'm going to go with the uh, Spider-Woman Volume 3 uh, Marvel Masterworks. Nice. Wasn't well, I actually don't have... You know what? I don't have this. I'd Marvel? Get the, yeah, I would... 
uh, I'll get the direct market cover of this because I actually have that book, the green suit one. You've got the Gene Colon. You got his first appearance. Yeah. Hmm. That's cool, man. Um, what about you, Curtis? Um, uh, I'm actually. So I'm the. I'm gonna uh, let me see what how do I want to say this? I'm not gonna get it, but I'm most excited for the Captain Marvel omnibus because that means I'm sure that means that the epic collections are on the way, and I do want to get those. But I think the one that I'm gonna get that I'm most excited about is Moon Knight Volume Four with a mm. with Peter Parker being the close runner up. Mm -hmm. I think I've been on a show now where Peter Parker has been in like four different solicits. <laughs> Uh, because it's been well, delayed so many times. I think I've talked about uh, that book like four times now on your show, Omar. <laughs> and you have a um, you have a Spider Man tattoo. Or sorry, Spider Ham tattoo on your thigh, don't you? That's how much you love the character. Is this the video that we're going to see later? <laughs> <laughs> don't need to see this. Oh yes, yes, <laughs> like definitely. Lars had a private screen. Good, good. I'm good. Uh, what about you, Lars? What's the book you're most excited for? Um. Weirdly, this just shows off the importance of reprints because uh, I do need Wolverine Epic Collection Volume 2. Uh, I just missed it the first time around. And, you know, some of these things, they go out of print and, like, if they retail for 40 bucks and then suddenly they're up to, like, you can only get them for, like, 60 or 70 on the back market. Frankly, I wish they would reprint Proteus because I, you know, I missed it and now it's 60 to 70 bucks. So Wolverine Epic Collection 2. Is a good one, and my mortal dilemma about the uh, Frank Miller Daredevil omnibus. <laughs> or stick with the masterworks. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Issue one sixty two in there. Uh, <laughs> they're probably in the masterworks. <laughs> actually, let's see. They are. It is in the masterworks. Yes, you're I in the book. Right. It, 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 issue one sixty two is in the book I'm holding. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and then you got to keep it. <laughs> that book is out of print too. Issue once uh, it, it is, I think. Yeah, yeah, the Daredevil book. Those no. those Marvel masterworks, man. They don't stay in print very long. Um, and I know yeah. that you know it's. Well, I guess like all things like you know because like I I got this one for like you know forty with discounts for, like forty two bucks or something. Mm -hmm. But then the moment it's out of print, it's like up to a hundred. Gotcha. Right. Uh. Okay. For me. I, I'm gonna go with Conan. I love Conan. Are you uh, still? I, I've really? enjoyed the crap out of reading those for the first time, and <clears throat> this wraps up the series. I don't know if they'll do the '90s series. Um, one thing I noticed here, though, that I didn't notice before was this copyright thing, Conan Properties International LLC. And I can't remember if they did that before. Do they do that with Star Wars too? Uh, I don't. I can't imagine them doing that with Star Wars. Let me look, let me double check. Let me double check. I am also interested in reading nope, Captain I, Carter. Yeah, I don't think so. But of course, Disney owns Star Wars. Yeah, so Conan way. is a different thing. But yeah, I'm I'm excited to read the finale. I'm excited to see how Roy Thomas comes I would, back. I, I would, would think they would start. I would think they would start collecting the '90s stuff because you know they they've got holes in the schedule. <laughs> <to fill. laughs> Boo! What was I supposed <laughs> to be excited for? What is he? What are you getting booed for? I don't know. Conan? Because <laughs> I chose Conan over Spider Gwen. Pride. What's Conan? What? What is it? Spider Gwen, Spider Verse, whatever that book was. <laughs> Gwen Verse. Gwen Verse. Gwen Verse. Thank I you. Actually, want to get back too. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> El Muerto seems like a bad SNL episode. <laughs> I, people, are jam, people are jamming us or me up for not knowing who Bad Bunny was, but. Uh, I mean, Vince, I, Bad Bunny. How the hell am I supposed to know who Bad Bunny is? I'm sixty three. Oh, well, it's just two people in the chat that don't. It's okay. I don't know who Bad Bunny was either. But I'm gonna be no, listening to his music. I will say, my daughter laughed and knew who Bad Bunny was. Of course she did. She is yeah. the youth. Yeah, I mean, come on, dude. It's like not knowing who Leapfrog is. You gotta, you gotta be a good geek. <laughs> uh, is, somebody keeps saying that the Thor Aaron. Uh, Omni's already out of print. Is that so? all three? All three covers are out of print. Wow! Like it doesn't. You know what? When I say out of print, I mean uh, at the distribution. At the distribution, yeah. 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 Stores, Not, stores will still stores will still have them. So yeah, right. well, yeah. But whatever they have left, that's it. But it's sold. Yeah. Okay, but it's sold yeah. out at the, at the um, meaning like distribution if, level. Yeah, meaning that you know, if in stock trades or cheap graphic novels, uh, organic price books, whomever wants more copies and they try to order it, it's gone. It cannot. Right. 
Wow. Uh, Hickvengers got pushed back till December. I put a list of Omnis on our Patreon. I Hold on one second. Let me double check. Um, I believe <sighs> Hickvengers is now volume two is February of 2023. Barzuk or Z however, I, I think that's what Omar's saying. They won't get restocked. They can't get restocked. Yeah, yeah. If, Correct. If a, if a shop has it and they sell it, then that's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not here to say. I mean, look, I'm just making a fact. I'm not here to like go out and buy it. Before you, like, I'm just saying, if you want it, then maybe try. You to are get here it to more trigger up moral panic. I realize. Yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. now that's also not to say that in stock trades ordered a hundred thousand copies of it and they'll never run out. Right. There's always a chance of that. But there's no way, and they would never tell you like that. We only have 13 copies left. They just whatever. They'll yeah. They'll sell them until they're gone. Um. So yeah, I was I was looking through the chat to see what uh what everybody else is. A lot of people are excited for that House of M, the Burn uh FF reprint. Max is crazy. Not even gonna read it. <laughs> he loves it. I know Max is great. Good job, Max. Oh, NATO House of oh. M. Really? Uh, Frank Miller, Daredevil, and House of M. Glad to see that there's a lot of people. I've been actually, it, it's interesting doing this and, and getting to release announcements because, you know, you get people that are like, why are they reprinting this for the 10th time? But then you have people that reach out to me. They're like, hey, I just started collecting last year. I'm yeah. so yeah. glad that Marvel's oh, reprinting this yeah. Daredevil book I keep hearing about. Well, so, and, you, and you can't buy everything. I mean, there's even stuff I'm interested in. It's like, oh, I can't buy that this month. And then it's gone. And then, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys my ex-wife she just joined the chat someone someone is asking uh how they're getting the daredevil masterworks as well and they missed uh the previous volume how crucial is it to miss issue 158 okay personally i mean i have less interest in daredevil up to the point that miller starts writing it and miller starts writing because he comes on as artist first and his, I believe his first issue that he wrote was 168, which is when Elektra is introduced. Mm -hmm. So how vital is having the stuff before it? I've never paid much attention to it, and my life has been fine. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I, I don't think it's it's very vital until that one issue. In that one issue, when he starts writing. Yeah, 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 up until yeah, one. Like, that's yeah, it. yeah, yeah, up until one. Yeah, the first Elektra <coughs> issue. Start reading from there. Yeah, absolutely. Star Wars, Aaron, Omni, or Vader. Aaron. Um, Aaron. Well, Vader was not Aaron. That was uh, Karen Gillan. Karen Gillan, right? Yeah. yeah. And for me, if I had to choose between those, ooh, Vader. 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 Vader by Gillan, not. Well, Arden. the answer is they're both great, and get both of them eventually. But yeah, I agree also with what Lars said. They are okay. both great. There you go. Amazing. Oh, Warren, really? You're not a fan of Anna Shanti's Daredevil? Oh, I, dude. It's become clear to me now. I know Warren from from being on live on myself it's clear to me that he and i don't agree on any no at all. he likes he likes dazzler uh what really he loves dazzler yeah oh, he well, hates that's, warren okay. hates wolverine but loves dazzler he <laughs> okay well we well we connect on uh dazzler then but i i know warren's a good guy but he and i are diametrically opposed on everything and there's nothing wrong with that you and I never no. agree on the same book. No, and what's true. up, buddy? Only one I need is FF by Burn so far. What? Michael M and my buddy, Fear of Missing Omar. That's right, Fomar. That's what that means. Uh, he wants a Dazzler bus. Okay, Warren, I guess that's all we agree on then. Those <laughs> but Peter, I'll, I'll settle for that. Those Peter, uh oh, shots fired a curse. Whoa. Here. Those Peter Porker issues are waste of paper. We need a chunk off. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh. I don't know how to read this. He's what jamming kind of you up. <laughs> what kind of tone that is? Are you, are you serious? Because you know I'd buy it. That's Michael. Uh, He's funny. Spider-Man 2099 for the wind. Yes. Uh, okay, I answer when Hickvengers 2. Hickvengers 2. Oh, when will it be solicited? Well, if it's in the February catalog, it might be solicited nah, maybe next month. Maybe as early as next month. And right now, uh, Cheap Graphic Novels is only sold out of the Joe Quesada cover. Never thought that would be the one to go first. I really thought the Russell Dodderman cover would go first. The the Thor, the Goddess of Thunder. Mm -hmm. When are we going to get Thor by Jason Aaron, Volume 2? I've not heard. What? You've just been given Volume 1. Greedy, <laughs> greedy, greedy. 
Yeah, enjoy wow. enjoy what you're given. <laughs> Lars does not uh, represent. Omar is all green all the time. He can say whatever he wants to and go home. <laughs> Serious question for Laura. Yeah. I'm also doing Daredevil Miller uh, in Marvel Masterworks, but I missed the previous volume with issue 158. Oh, it was he the one that asked? I thought somebody else asked. Yeah, that, that, that's the one that I attempted to answer. That you know, and uh, I I really don't take Daredevil all that seriously until Miller starts writing it. Um, it's, it's not there's anything wrong with what's before. It's just that's where my focus was. Yeah. Is there enough material for a Spider-Man by Peter David omnibus? All right, let's crack our heads here because Jeff, the the death of Gene DeWolf, then he did Friendly Neighborhood. He had a couple of fill-ins here and there. Which is amazing. I don't know. I don't know how that would go though. I don't. Those aren't my favorite type of omnis really when they're collected like something from the from the eighties and then you got something from like twenty almost Friendly Neighborhood two thousand and five two thousand six. It, yeah, there might yeah you know, with friendly neighborhood there might actually be enough. It would be kind of jarring, as you say. Maybe I would take friendly neighborhood with symbiote Spider Man, which has been great. I mean, regardless of how you feel about uh, Greg Land's artwork, I think he's killing it on that book. Well, I wish they would just reprint friendly neighborhood Spider Man um, because that's another one that's been, I believe, out of print for quite a while and going for bigger money. We live in a world, by the way... now with El Muerto <laughs> getting his own movie with Bad Bunny. Yes. We, we live in a world, by the way, where the trade paperback of Zatanna by Paul Denis can go for about $150. Oh, it's been like that. It's been yeah. like that. It's Denis, been like Denis, that for Tiny, whatever his name is. <laughs> Our, speaking um, of Peter David, I remember I when Peter David... Rich. Last Avenger story. <laughs> oh, was right. Going yeah. For $150. Yeah. yeah at yeah. a convention. Yeah. 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 For a trade paperback. Yeah. I think it's now the first to last is also out of print. Wait, sure. what is? Sorry. Uh, first looking. Avengers, first to last. It was a Marvel premiere hardcover. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it was Avengers, uh, the last story, the last Avenger story by Peter okay. David, which is to me one of one of my favorite hidden gems. I love brilliant. it. Brilliant. Yeah. We live in a world where start of every great trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Omar, I don't remember breaking news for Hickvengers Volume 2. Yeah, I think I announced both of them together, didn't I? I don't know. I don't go back and watch my videos. Uh, we live in a <laughs> We live in a Now it could be Joker. It's true. I'm waiting for Sony's announcement of the big wheel movie. Mm -hmm. Well, who did, who did they oh, else did they announce? Madam Web. Isn't Cardiac with Drake? Did I hear about that too? What? Who? I know Drake. Who was the first one? I love that you know Drake, but you don't know who Cardiac is. Cardiac oh, was Cardiac. Like, oh. I thought okay, Cardiac. It All has right. been strange in a world where they're milking that Sony's milking that license, and you're told quite seriously they're doing a Craven the Hunter movie, and you're just like, I forgot about Craven. I just want like, well, to that go, might man. be good, but wow, maybe. Uh, I'm waiting for the uh, Silver, Silver Sable can't be far behind. I want a doppelganger oh. uh, movie. Everyone knows Drake. Ch Chameleon. Yeah, Blanket. even I know Drake. Everyone. Uh, Lars, this is a question for you. Who the heck is Paul Dane? Dane. 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 <laughs> BJ Dane. with the great question. That is the that is the Norwegian pronunciation of his name. <laughs> oh my God, I never thought about that. Every time I mispronounce somebody's name, which happens every day here in, on this channel, I'm going to say that is the Peruvian way of pronouncing yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Ribich. Okay? No, you should say it's the Norwegian way. Yeah. I ain't got a Norwegian blood cell in me. Excalibur Volume 1 reprint sold out in about 30 minutes from the bookseller I use, hoping I can still get it bought Volume 2, assuming... Stuart, did you not pre-order oh. it? Oh, I'm wait. sorry, buddy. Wait, Excalibur Epic Collection Volume 1? That is being reprinted. So. No, no, no. I think he uh, meant the Omni. Oh, the Omni. Oh, the, Omnibus. Oh, the, the Omni. The Omni. The Omni. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just it came and went, and it had a small print run. I think Cheap Graphic Novel still has the direct market cover. I think you're uh, right. Mistaken. I don't think Amazon's getting his theirs yet. His Omar, you should wrap the show up with an encore by Kermit. It's the only one oh yet. gosh, yes. And Matt's saying yes. Cheap Graphic Novel still has it, but I don't know where Stuart yeah. lives. I always forget people also live outside of this country, uh, like Norwegia. Norwegia, actually. They have their direct market version still listed as pre-order. So hopefully they're getting some. Special order or pre-order? 
It says it still says oh it's well wait it says pre order and out of stock so maybe the website's confused. It's excellent. Every time I make a YouTube video, I'll just say that's how Canadians pronounce it, right? It's a good <laughs> loophole. Oh, did I not use that before? Oh, dude, you live in Ireland. Okay. Uh, uh, Curtis, is that part of the EU? <laughs> the EU? <laughs> Curtis, uh, I can do it. pronunciations. What about geography? I don't know. <laughs> if you're part sure, of the EU, sure. check out Wolf's yeah, no, Comic like, Shop. Actually, is it yes, part I, of I, Ireland? I, is in another actually, part Ireland, of Ireland? Ireland. Ireland. Ireland is still in the EU, but North okay. Northern Ireland. If is you are in the EU, check. Remember that sponsorship I just had a few minutes ago. Uh, Walt's Comic Shop, man, that's where you need to go. Good journey, my friend. Yeah. Cancel my Amazon pre-order. They say May seventh through 9th. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if they'll, they'll still still get it. Can we scroll down the Omnis again? Yeah, of course. I don't know why I kept it on. All right, last time. Last like time. Stop talking and show us pictures. House <laughs> of M, Captain Marvel, <laughs> Volume 1, Fantastic Four by Byrne, Volume 2, Daredevil by Miller, reprint, the fourth printing with new covers, uh, Fantastic Four, OHC, Volume 3, Conan the Barbarian, the final volume, uh, Volume 10, Incredible Hulk by Peter David, Volume 2. I love it. You know what I wish? Uh, but that's it. That's it. There you go. Uh, one thing that I wish that would probably make me like if the spines of the Hulk actually spelled out Hulk since there's four of them. Oh man, can you imagine my dumbass actually rebuying all those so I could have Hulk spelled out? Because there's that one uh, image that what's his name did? Uh, was it Del Keon on one of the issues where it had like Hulk and it had its different faces as they were changing? Yeah, yeah, that was. Really oh, nice. that would be awesome. Um. Omar, where's the DeFalco FF Omni run? I don't know, brother. Where are hey, any DeFalco, DeFalco Omnis? Yeah, he's got none, right? None. Not Spider Man, <sighs> Fantastic Thor. Four, Thor, Spider Girl. No DeFalco. One day, one day. You know, I, I love his Fantastic Four and his Thor run. Very underrated. Yep. I think most people think of his run in the Fantastic Four with Sue Boob Window. <laughs> which is a lot more than that. Yeah. That should be the tagline. More than just a boob window. <laughs> um, Walt's Comic Shop, where Sun Boy and Moon Knight live together in harmony. Hydro Man seems like it would be released by Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Why'd you highlight that? Because I, I, I just like reading comments, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, DBZ All-Star? Omar, forgot the Conan the Librarian omnibus announcement, complete with a guide to the Dewey Decimal System. Nobody knows what a Dewey Decimal System is anymore, man. Or maybe they still use it. I don't know. Do they? Oh, I'm sure they do. We have, like, one new Fantastic Four omnibus in the last five years. It's tragic. Taylor, I haven't made my announcement yet. Whoa. <gasps> yet. Teaser. Um... Don't get too excited though. Uh, so Sony, how long till you make a movie about Tombstone and Hammerhead? And Spot by <laughs> I'd actually yeah, watch that. That would be good. <laughs> I'd actually watch. Here, that. Here's the thing: Bob, Bob Bay, the movie. Sony can announce things left and right, but I mean, if they still have to make the movies. DC did the same thing. Warner Brothers was announcing things left and right, left and right, and then Black Adam still coming Man up. Of Steel number two. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. But. Someone's someone's asking weirdly about uh, Doctor Who omnibuses, and it is an interesting question because the Doctor Who magazine comics, I mean, involves such creators as you know, such such you know, low name creators as Dave Gibbons, Alan Moore, Steve Parkhouse, Grant Morrison. Nope. You know, on and on. Really, those names. Really Who are those guys? Incredible. And 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 on the one hand, those have been reprinted over the years a fair amount. Um, but on the other hand, you feel like, yeah, there should be room for Dr. Omnibus. I think, I think Titan's probably missing a trick by not doing that. Yeah. Uh, is, is that who owns the rights? Titan, Titan, Titan currently has the rights to the comics. Yeah. Now, let me ask you something really quick. And maybe any of you know this, like is, is Titan, Titan comics, European based or are they out of America reprinting books no. from Europe too? Well, so weirdly Titan is the publishing arm of Forbidden Planet. I believe. I think I'm right. I think, I think so I'm therefore right. so the copyrights don't, they're not restricted to copyrights like they are like if if marvel oh, were i see what you're saying um because I, I i am mainly talking about death's head doctor who and transformers 
all appearing in one magazine. Yeah, and I can never I, get that because everybody owns the rights. Different people that own the, the rights. Yeah, the they record. they seem to have a more global license because there's I can't immediately think of anything they're doing that doesn't show readily show up here in comic shops. So, well, I can hmm. speak to the, the um I know that Titan has a Flash Gordon license to reprint the old Alex Raymond Flash Gordon stuff and. Right. They, but then also at the same time, Library of American Comics was releasing their Flash Gordon stuff here stateside. Okay. Uh, so uh, it really depends on contracts because if if Titan has an exclusive contract to Doctor mm, Who, then yes, only they can only they can do con uh, Doctor Who. But if um, if they have an I don't know an exclusive license, <laughs> but if they have they like it's mm. possible that other companies can do Doctor Who comics as well. It just depends on what the contracts stipulate. Is 2000 yeah. AD a uh, arm of Titan? I think 2000 AD is done by someone else. Yeah, Rebellion. that's Rebellion 2000 yeah. AD. So okay. they are they're like, Judge Dread. They're separate. Right. Okay. I know you think the same way I do. Oh, it's overseas. They're all related. <laughs> For some reason, I, I everyone knows everyone else there. I think the that I ordered. I must have ordered. Uh, a Judge Dread book from Titan, which must have been from Forbidden Planet, as Lars said. They're uh, Maybe that's how I got it confused, but I, for some reason I thought Titan and 2000 AD were similar, and yeah. I, I get it now. Um, but yeah, 2000 AD they mainly do the Judge Dread and things like that, but also Slain and a couple of others, right? Uh, books and they're great. I love them, and I think now you know they're showing up in Diamond preview. So that means, oh my gosh! Oh, nice. When did you get that? Uh, a couple months ago, I just haven't put it on the shelf next to the other two. Gorgeous, yeah, they really are. I've been eyeing that one too, and I Ooh, was I thinking, think, oh, maybe I should I get it. That's but is it black and white? Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to see if I can show something here. Let me highlight you, just okay. Yeah, man, this is yeah, this is this book I've been wanting, and I keep it's in my it's on my to buy list, but then of course. What usually happens with that, with something like this, it will eventually go out of print. Where'd you get it from? I got it from uh, 2000 AD. So you ordered from their website. Did you have to pay for shipping? Here, let me. I did. Okay. Yeah. And it was actually, it was um, there were the, the two before this. Wow, this is, I haven't had a chance to really look through it, but it's pretty amazing. Yeah, man, I need that. The first two were, um, are out of print and i don't know maybe this third volume is too but it's look you're giving me fomo jess I, 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 the other way around. I am certain that whatever video curtis has to show us is gonna have to work damn hard to be better than that <laughs> <laughs> if it's just him singing kermit i'll be sad <laughs> <laughs> So it's at the it's a 2008 yeah. web shop. Yeah, okay. right. Next imagine that's the one that hipped me to the fact that it was out. I looked at my email. They had emailed me and actually I'm pretty grateful uh Next imagine I had essentially told me to look in my email because I think it sold out fairly quickly. Wow. Uh Poe Dameron and Bounty Hunters are two big series that could be collected in Omnis. We are getting War of the Bounty Hunters. You know, people keep talking about Poe Dameron. It was voted like top 50 most wanted Marvel omnibus. And I was like, what? Wow. Really? There was enough material for the Oh, guy? I've got like seven trades of it. So that means you dig it? an Omni's coming. Yeah. I've read the first four, three or four. It, it's good. Yeah, I liked it a lot. But if, if I own all the trades, that means an Omni's coming. Right. <laughs> Is that, that the way it usually works? Yeah. No, 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 no. That's it's if you it works. are interested in the series, you find out that the trades are out of print, and you're like, oh, man, I'm going to pay a little more than I should. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and buy it. <laughs> uh -oh. Then I'll announce the omnibus. Only after I found out you paid for it, and it's already in your hands. Yeah. Speaking of things that are out of print, that first Daredevil uh, OHC by uh, Zadarsky is really out of print and expensive. I know. And my, and David's answer to that is we don't have any plans right now, but it does not mean that we're not going to reprint it. Okay. So it might get I, a reprint. I think yeah. some people were asking that. Yeah. They, I get asked every mm. Saturday just about. Oh. Uh, the Spirits of Vengeance uh, coming out next week, new reader friendly. Oh, man. Uh, I have no idea. It, it is, but 
I, I I haven't read it yet. That's in my to read pile. I got like three more books from next week that I need to read. So it's one of those times when Danny catches um, indisposed, if you will, and you have Sarathos, the spirit of vengeance, a Ghost Rider, maybe, maybe it could be a different demon. Anyway, he's in control, of Ghost Rider. I, I, how do I put this? Uh, it's not new reader friendly <laughs> after all this. I think it is because that was the point of it, though. It was a crossover oh. to introduce new series like the Dark Hold and uh the night stalkers uh, uh experience of vengeance yeah and morbius so i think it is new reader friendly uh, is he on the toilet because he's in this post no no <laughs> uh, uh but yeah 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 i think it is i love that era you have like andy kubert's artwork inked by joe kirby i mean joe joe kubert his father whoa really wow. better than that are they going to reprint the X Men Classic Omni? Uh, you know what? That was one of my uh, casualties of moving. So I would hope so. You lost it? No, it's it's fine. But the dust jacket got oh, it got munched. Oh man, yeah, and it's like up in my top shelf. Ah, this looks rough, but you know. Were you uh, standing no, there cradling it like Superman with Supergirl's body? You know? Yeah, it's one of those books, too, but I'm like, it, the odds of that coming back in the print are very slim because it's not, I mean, it's X-Men, I realize yeah. that. Yeah, so it's funny you meant, because, well, I, too, asked you if it was coming back in print. I finally sucked it up and paid near full price, so I have one. Mm -hmm. um, but given the era that it's from, you'd think, oh, maybe they would reprint that one. Yeah, I, I, I really don't know if they're going to reprint it. I haven't read Poe, but I haven't, I have, I've heard great things, yeah. I'll probably hold out for an Omni then. But Show David completed out home, yeah. eBay price, sell prices. <sighs> yeah, um, he keeps up from time to time with what's going on. I usually forward him something. He's like, ah, hey Omar, I just got Captain America lives omnibus. Do you think that Death and Cap and uh, Trial of Captain America should have been one? Oh wait, wait okay, let me re read this. The just got no. Captain America lives omnibus. Do you think that Death of Captain America should have been that and Death should have been one book? It matches the size of volume one. Here's the problem, Rob. Uh, that was at the time when they were publishing Omnis before Omnis blew up like they are now. And Brubaker was still writing the book. So they had no idea how long he was going to be on the book. I don't think there was even a contract. He was just writing. So they were just coming up with Omnis as soon as there were like volumes. And then when they thought, okay, that's a good enough story arc. Let's put it into an omnibus. And when the reprints came, all they did was send those same files over to the printer. That's it. Had they done it now, I'm sure that run probably could have been collected in two Omnis. Two very big Omnis, but two compared to the five that it was before. David Gabriel's usually the one selling out of print books on eBay. It's insider. <laughs> I think that's a insider trading, if I'm not mistaken. Not right. yeah. uh, it's why I've stuck with trades for my Star Wars collection. It's, it's kind of an interesting question, though, because I... Well, now I Marvel's changed their comp system over the years. I believe they're digital now, mostly. Um, but I think there was a scandal, wasn't it, where Marvel employees were selling their comp copies um, on eBay. I know that at Wizard, funnily enough, they would give us the action figures, the Wizard promo action figures. And I went to my boss and I said, "Am I if I don't want this thing, am I allowed to sell it? And he said, it's your property. You do what you want with it. I'm like, okay, great. But some companies, yeah, don't like that. Yeah, I think that's a company specific. It is thing. I can't imagine that Marvel would be happy with people, any people that they comp books to, selling them. Well, again, that's why I think there's been a big push. Man, it's all the stick of water. You calling me out? I what? You're giving them all away? Or, I thought you were calling me out. No, I'm not talking about you at all. Oh, okay. I'm talking about just in general. In but general, when, in general. When he said when he said people were comping books and that he, they were moving more to digital uh, comps, which I think is interesting because uh, I can't imagine think, that DC think, or Marvel would be happy with that. I think it was, was it DC? I think DC, I did hear maybe that they, like if you're on a monthly ongoing series. You I, get think, I remember when I was reviewing uh, manga for a magazine back in 2005, 2006, they were like, hey, we can send you stuff, but it's going to be all digital. I was like, oh, okay, well. I guess I could still read it that way. Uh, but yeah, it's hard to do that. I remember I had one publisher reach out to me and saying they would send me copies. And they were really sweet. And I'm not going to say who the publisher was, but then they said, mm -hmm. uh, 
is it okay if it's digital copies? And I said, yeah, my channel revolves around collected editions, like physical yeah. copies. I have to show the book. And they were like, yeah, we can't do that. And I said, okay, well, I'll still, if it's in my hall, then I'll be happy to show it. But I, yeah, I'm, they were really nice about it. Uh, as far as reprinting the Hickman Omnis, are you talking about Fantastic Four? Because those are also out of print. I don't know if those are going to be reprinted or not. Uh, and the thing about this, uh, uh, when people are like, miss out on something, I understand. But the thing is, if they were to go back to print to those, that will delay another book that was already in the schedule. So they they, they would have to shoehorn in, I don't know, I don't know how many reprint copies there would be, 600. I don't. I really don't know the numbers. But then that would delay another book. So that's why they try not to do it. That's why they try to, you know, make sure people are pre-ordering these books so they know the exact number plus whatever algorithm they use uh, to print them. I had no idea Fantastic Four by Hickman was going to be out of print. Like, it's crazy. Um, just like Thor, I really thought Thor, I mean, I guess it really sold well enough that it went out of print. Because we haven't had those issues for a while now, right? Like You're like, yeah. oh, I'll just wait a couple of weeks. I did yeah. stress the fact that like Excalibur was going to be a small print run because it was a reprint. But that was about the only book that I knew ahead of time coming in like, oh, it's out of print. Um, Thor, when the, the when the retailers got it, was already out of print. It's crazy. Yeah. Thor by Aaron. Yeah. 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 That okay. one. And like and, I said, we haven't had that in a while, right? Like you guys right. collect Omnis, except for especially with three Epic Boy over there. Epic right. Boy. Um, uh, yeah. you, you figured they print enough, but like we haven't had that issue like we used to before, where books would go out of print and then yeah. they would be gone in minutes. And the paper shortage problem remains a real thing, which, as you say, I'm gonna call you out, Stuart. <laughs> it might become a problem that, again, to reprint book A, you might have to bump book B. I mean, there's just a limit to what they can do. Yeah, I think people forget that there's a real paper shortage and yeah. a shortage of everything, really, still. I mean, there's still a lot of those container ships still haven't been unloaded. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, all that all of that, and also, like, again, you know, we still print books, and I have to get those files now in two or three months earlier than normal, and my printer's in Illinois. Mm. You know, they're just like, yeah, you got to get in super early, so we so we can make that paper commitment. I'm like, okay, yeah. All right, I'm gonna take a couple more questions, and then you're always welcome to come back on the Saturday live stream where I answer all these type of questions. Hey, Omar's FF Volume One and Two, then Avengers. Then Secret Wars, a good reading order. Yeah, it is. Uh, I would stick in Shield, Architects, uh, the OHC before reading any of that, and Secret Warriors if it gets reprinted. Has Marvel got any omnibus that are always in print? No. Uh, there is not a single book that is always in print, like e either at Marvel or DC. Even though we joke yeah. about Watchmen always being in print, it's just the way that the business is ran. There's not a there's not an infinite amount of space that they have allocated for a book, right? Otherwise, no. they run out of space. Uh, there's warehouses, boats, printing warehouses, distribution warehouses, and, of course, retailers. So there's not a book that stays in print forever. They should. No. Be on Kenny X-Men 1. Although their commitment to some things works out better than others because, like, um, the Claremont X-Men uh, Omnis, you know, th there's a good amount of copies of those about the place. So that's good. That's good. You can get those. But, yeah. Nothing is infinitely in print. Stay positive, woke NATO. Do not Let put that out in the universe, woke NATO. No. <laughs> That's like the one book Jess wants. That's the only book I care about this year. Gwenpool. <laughs> Crazy. I've noticed the last few months Marvel has started selling more newly printed Omnis digitally. Do you think that's their strategy going forward? I know very little about the digital market. Like, zero as in like i go and read one issue issue one of something digitally if it's like uh, a new image title if it's the creator i care about when you say uh, selling them digitally do you mean like kindle or do you mean where exactly uh, comicsology or the marvel app oh oh comics yeah comicsology yeah. um that might become the new norm you know like for example the quantum and woody omnibus has been out of print for forever uh but you can pay like 40 bucks for a digital copy yeah. Oh, bar. Yes. Yes. A sad yeah. year that it was canceled. And I mean, we need that. Kelly Thompson's run on Black Widow is my favorite Black Widow I've read. That that was like that first six issues was like the the best Black Widow I've read. 
It's wait. Wait, what is going on here? Wait, Edward is like trolling me and Jazz. Cancel Gwen Pool and cancel New Warriors too. So we can print some American Chavez. What the what? And so we can get Amazing Spider-Man versus Venom. What the uh, how about we just get it take it all, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these complete collections have been for a while. Not- that might be what mitigates against a Chuck Austin X Men uh, Omni. It's just we can't commit the paper to that. <laughs> when pulling in humans for my two favorite Omni. Look at Robert. Wait a minute. Okay, he's not including me in that anymore. I was like, okay, that's cool, Roberto. It's my cool. two favorite Omni Bros. Digitally is honestly overpriced. What are they charging so much for? I get the price for an actual printed product. Ah. But digital is basically pure profit. No, no, I think, uh, uh, no, 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 no. We, we need to be careful when we say that digital is pure profit. You have to be careful that the one market doesn't cannibalize the other market. Exactly. If, someone, if someone buys a digital copy and they then instead don't buy a print copy that they would have bought, that's not pure profit. There you're robbing Peter to pay Paul and Mary. So it, it it's fine, but there's this shell game that goes on. It's they uh, They're trying to make sure retailers your LCS doesn't go out of business. Yeah. They can't cut the price on uh, digital stuff, make it cheaper than anything in your LCS, or you're going to lose all your LCSs or, or it's going to cause great upheaval. So there's, I think it's kind of like a, an unspoken uh, handshake that they won't price lower than an LCS to keep that market alive. Right. Yeah. 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 So um, it's not I I know what you're saying about digital being pure profit, but Lars is right. It's it's a it's a cost uh it's it's a risk I don't I'm trying to think of the you can't put your LCS out of business. That's right. what I'm saying. No, you can't. No. It it is possible the, the more you promote digital, you have to do it in such a way that you don't slit your own throat. And that's it. Although we've also seen that the market has kind of tapped out that like m- for most publishers, including Marvel, including DC, digital seems to account for maybe, and I'm telling you, like 15 to 20%. And that doesn't seem to be changing a lot. Um, quickly, someone asked in the question, do any of you know the specific, um, the exact amount of uh, books you have? Interesting no. question. No, Omar doesn't. I do not. Jess, you even keep track Jess, of Jess doesn't even know what he hauled last week. <laughs> no, I don't. I can't even give you a percentage. That I I've feel read. like Kermit the Frog up there, though. I feel like he might actually keep it. Kermit counts ways. better than others. Yeah. I don't. No? You don't. I, there was I'm a time surprised. that I used to, but once it got, uh, once, um, I don't know, I started buying them too fast and I just didn't update my spreadsheet. It's probably in the 3,000. 3,000? 3,000. Like yeah. Omar, did you, did you count when you moved or just shoved no, them? No, I back? didn't count. Yeah. Well, I don't know. One. <laughs> One. Two. <laughs> three. No. <laughs> that is a punishment for my kids, though. That's a good punishment. Did you go downstairs? Count my Marvel shelf and DC shelf. Uh, really quickly, I want to. I, I, oh, th- by the way, I don't know exactly. I have about 550. Oh, okay. Five hundred. Uh, yeah, pretty it's, it's pretty small potatoes, really. Ah, no, the five hundred and fifty is good, man. Yeah. Everything's good when you collect. Okay, so uh, I want to uh, highlight this comment, not to call anybody out, but uh, just but you're my going comic book shop is selling JLA Avengers for two hundred and fifty. They should go out of business. <laughs> so here, here's I. I I've I've shared this, and this is just, of course, my opinion. I think. Being a low, like a retail comic shop has to be difficult enough. Like we, you know, how many of us go into a comic book shop and buy an omnibus there for retail price? Probably maybe, maybe, you know, yeah. maybe some of my uh, people that are overseas because they don't have a choice. But here in America, it's like, why would I when I can order it online for 40 to 50 percent off? So I don't. They they can do whatever they want to with that book. It's their it's their book they ordered, and if people are paying for those prices, they can do what, whatever they want to. I wouldn't personally like you know. I, I think it's profit should be given to. Uh, uh, well, but it's also a local comic book shop, which is a striving business, and I get it. I get when these things. Yeah. There's a reason why they order a hundred copies of a book so they can get a variant that they can sell for four hundred dollars or one hundred and fifty dollars. Those are just my two cents on that. No, I think, Omar, are we allowed to mention other comic shops by name that aren't sponsors of this channel? No, especially yours. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Um, uh, here, here in Des Moines, Mayhem, I thought, really uh, acted pretty ethically about this. They, you know, took um, they, they made a list of people who wanted it, and then they said, okay, you know, however many copies we get, and but the people, the copies they did get, they sold for thirty bucks, and you know, that was that was very nice and very ethical of them. It means they made less money, but it was very nice of them. Yeah, yeah and this this book also has an emotional component to it too because it's a a charity for right. a beloved creator that's mm -hmm. doesn't have that much longer to live and so that i think that emotional component added to the limited nature of the run is kind of a one-off thing but i don't know that you're gonna we've seen before um so th I, I i see both sides on this issue and it's especially sticky because it's george uh, perez uh, involved with it um so I, I i see both sides and it's uh i'm just my thing is i'm just so bummed out i never got to meet uh george perez he was going to be at that baltimore con we went to yeah, Omar, and that was right at the beginning of when he started having problems and he looked like such a fun interesting great guy i mean there's pictures of him <laughs> doing the superman pose with supergirl in his arm only in some fan and he's got he's holding a fan yeah that, that one was... picture i just wanted to meet him so badly just because that one picture means he's a really funny good guy yeah i would yeah. see george frequently at dragon con and if you want some really astonishing pictures of george uh with i mean truly staggering number of cosplay people uh look up the dragon con photos because i mean there's there's these steps behind the hilton and they just filled the stairs with George's characters, especially the one where he's standing up and like they're all lying dead. Uh, it's really quite, really quite fun. George, 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 George kills the Marvel and DC universes. It's great. It's great. He, he was, that's the, actually the last time I met him. Cause I met him a total of like three times. The last time I met him was at Dragon Con a couple of years ago. And he where had is, changed. Where is changed. Dragon Con? Atlanta. 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 Okay. Yeah. They, Cause he was only doing like three cons after retiring mm -hmm. officially. Uh, but yeah, great guy. Love talking to him. Would yeah. take his time with anybody. Loved when the ladies would dress up as his character. <laughs> oh yeah, so he did not shy yeah. away from that. Oh man, no. <laughs> I'm sure there's some wild stories in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, but yeah, phenomenal artist. Uh, this is a question for Lars. I know it's not about mm. comics, but do you have any update on the next About Time book? Our next About Time book is going to be an extended uh, second edition of the Tom Baker volume. And in fact, it is so um, expanded, it's going to be two volumes, two volumes. And I've been signing off on the cover art this week. And so we should be soliciting them pretty soon. Pretty soon. Yep. I will... Um... I would love to have a trivia night between you and Jess as to oh. who the biggest Doctor Who. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Who. Oh, dear. Uh, Doctor Who, yeah. All right. Uh, let's go around here and um, tell where, where can people find you guys. Curtis, Kermit the Frog there. Where can people find you, brother? Hi, Kermit. Uh, uh, people can find me at epicmarvelpodcast.com or any of those social media places. Uh, I just started a new um, TikTok account and that my handle is Motion Toast and I do comic related stuff there that doesn't fall into the the epic Marvel podcast kind of realm but uh, and it's, it's you, fun no dancing you, no no dazzler cosplay unfortunately but <laughs> are you dressed as giant slices of toast yeah Motion oh, man, Toast um, maybe I'll have to see if I can find a toast costume <laughs> uh, uh, Norwegian Assassin, Lars, where can people find you? Yes, I'm at madnorwegian.com, and I am mainly known for uh, Doctor Who, but I didn't want people to think that I only have the, you know, the one book to flog. Uh, I also want to remind people, I did back in the day write an, eight, oops, an angel book uh, called Redeemed, um, which I co-wrote with my lovely wife, who's a chaos pixie. So Redeemed, that's on the TV series Angel. And we also wrote a book, a guidebook on Buffy the Vampire Slayer called Dusted, um, which I co-wrote with her and Lawrence Miles. So if you're into Buffy or Angel, uh, those books are available. All right. I am into both of those. There you go. Uh, Omnidog, who are you? What do you do? Uh, I'm Omnidog on Omnidog's Vault on YouTube and on Instagram, Omnidog's underscore Vault. Uh, my next couple of videos, <clears throat> I had a bad week last week, but I've had a good week this week. So good. I should be putting videos up soon on 
uh, Astro City, where to start with did how to start with digital comics, an overview of the Silver Age Wonder Woman, and other stuff that I'm uh, taking advantage of the days that I feel good. Good Which is right now. Good. Good. I'm good. glad you're feeling good. better. Yeah. Uh, how you start with digital awesome. comics is you burn your digital tablet and you read physical, or you go. <laughs> Okay, you're not going to be a guest on that no, show. Please have me on that. <laughs> and I'm also on TikTok with boring old guy as my handle. So I'm definitely not. Good. I'm going to look that up. Um, <laughs> all right. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Hit that like button on the way out. Check out cheapgraphicnovels.com. Uh, that is our sponsor here in the U.S. They have books up to 50% off. Film near mint condition sent you their way for free shipping on your next order. So, Everyone stay healthy and safe. I will see you tomorrow with the upcoming collected editions for May. Curtis, sign us off. You silly bastard. Uh, I don't know what to say. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Ah! <laughs>